I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, you're traveling in a commercial airliner. Everything is going smoothly until the aircraft is engulfed in a bright light and a close encounter of a very frightening kind begins. My next guest is an author, lawyer, professional investigator, and the man behind an intriguing book called It Begins. We welcome Ma Michael Albright to Spotlight. Thank the folks at Good River Print and Media for helping us put Michael in the spotlight today. And we ask our viewers watching on YouTube to please support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Michael, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. This is quite an imaginative book. I understand it had its inspiration years ago when your yeah. child was born at Mount Sinai Hospital. You heard some kind of story about aliens and so forth. Tell me about the uh, etymology of all this. Okay, well, my son was a patient in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And one night about four o'clock in the morning, you know, you hang around hospitals. Mm. I went down to the cancer ward where they have these very, very tall windows that out that looks over North uh, New York City. And I was standing in the window gazing out and a woman comes into a window next to me and she starts to point out a building. Well, there's thousands of buildings, yeah. you know, and then finally we zeroed in on the building she was talking about and she goes that's where the woman was abducted so i said oh i said i read the newspaper about three times today and i didn't see anything about it what happened and she goes oh no it was aliens that abducted her so i said oh now you take that fact aside years and years later there were two fbi agents on a surveillance outside her building and actually witnessed it you know they came forward to one of those shows uh aliens or something mm -hmm. so I, I we talked for a few minutes and then i figured i gotta get out of here <laughs> you know so i backed out and i went back to my son's room now he was attending uh embry riddle aviation uh, school mm -hmm. and he would get the um accident reports from around the world regarding aircraft so i sat there reading and going through them and i came across an article about a plane in the congo that simply just disappeared they searched for it they looked for it america sent over a uh, mad detector magnetic anomaly detector they couldn't find this aircraft it just simply disappeared mm. so i took that fact plus what the woman was saying and realizing that we were in the for a long haul in the hospital, I figured I would start writing a book partially to keep my son entertained mm -hmm. so we could argue about and take his mind off his illness. Yeah. And that's how it started. You know, I that's, that's, wrote that's, in the hospitals. That's amazing. I mean, as an investigator, as a journalist, we hear crazy stories. Like we know everybody in jail is innocent. We oh, know yeah. that the people at home are being spied on by the people watching them on TV. We hear a lot of crazy things and a lot of them we discount, but some yeah. of them might be true. That's and when it comes to aliens and UFOs, and aren't we a little arrogant to say with all those planets out there and all those stars out there that ours is the only one that's inhabited? Oh, it's extremely arrogant. You know, and I did a lot of research for this book, and I came across reports of UFOs all over the world from very credible people, you know, and I got into um, about the people missing that disappear off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. In the Alaska Triangle, there's over 10,000 people missing. And it was it's not all due to animals. You know, they never find the skeletons, they never find the bodies. They look for them extensively, both by satellite and, of course, on the ground, and they just never find them. So it's a it's a problem. Mm. And, and book, if you talk about it credibly, you're viewed as a whack. <laughs> a whack, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know Tucker Carlson, I don't know if you watch him on Fox, yeah, he often it. addresses UFOs. And yeah. I almost said when he's watching, I'm like, uh, maybe you shouldn't uh, talk about this because you're losing credibility. But it seems yeah. like now our government is going to become more forthcoming with some of the information that they have about yeah. unexplained well, phenomena, the right? Been, 
investigating UFOs for ages. You know, they just won't admit it, but it's coming out in dribs and dribble, you know, about the different programs that they had. And it's it's real. I mean, it's here, you know, and people with cell phones, the evidence is becoming more and more prevalent, especially in uh, South America. You know, and um, people in the north, northern North America, I mean, I've seen a couple of UFOs. Mm. I even recorded them. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, people are awake, starting to wake up to it, you know. It's, it's really frightening when you think of what Stephen Hawking says. He says that if there are alien life forms out there and he suspects there are, that they'd be hostile towards us. Yeah. And that's the basis of the book. Yeah. That's of the hostility that the aliens bear. And there's one section in the book where... There was this, there's a secret command that's got started called Space Command. And the fellow in charge of it is Michael Scott, Rear Admiral Michael Scott. And they had a feeling that there was spies on the base. Mm. So they started hunting them down. And this head spy was a doctor in the medical unit. And there was an incident in Brazil where a plane had disappeared but the bodies were returned and there was a young girl that was left to give testament to the the way they just mutilated the bodies and took all the organs mm. and she was in the hospital and he had received orders from his superior to kill the girl mm. and he was walking towards the girl's room when he realized i'm not going to kill a four-year-old girl and he took the needle and jabbed it in his neck. Hmm. And security guards came right away because they realized that he was the, the uh, spy. And when they came, he was still alive. And Scotty asked them, what do you want here? And he goes, we want your planet. Oh, you know? it's pretty powerful. So, yeah. And I don't know if they want the planet, but they're here they're desecrating people they're moving around um there's ufos everywhere you know both the classic saucer type and a few other types mm. and there are multiple aliens the most fiercest ones are the insectoids people who have survived those abductions tell horrible stories you know and there's others mm. you know and um Everyone in the world is starting to believe in this phenomenon, you know, and it doesn't seem to end, you know, and in the book, it begins, it concludes, there's a second volume where they take on the alien force who are hiding on the dark side of the moon. They were using it as a base to invade Earth and manipulate Earth and what have you. And they went to war with them. Uh, yeah, it's a be... fascinating book. You've really created a credible scenario based on your own knowledge, on your research, on what people know about aliens and the information that is out there. So it's very, very gripping reading this book. And I'm yeah. happy that you're writing a sequel to it or is the sequel already released? Yeah, there's two volumes out. Uh, I'm writing a third one now. Okay, yeah. so we have It Begins and the second volume is called? It begins part two. Okay. And the third and volume, it begins part three? Begins part three. Okay. I could never See, come up with I, I have a sixth sense on these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very prescient. It might be because yes. I'm an alien. I don't know. I look like an alien. So no. uh, it's, a, it's a great job. You can learn more about Michael's books on Michael Albright books.com and I really do find this a fascinating topic to talk about Michael because like I said you're not anybody if in fact I would think somebody like yourself would be the most cynical about stuff like this because like I said as a journalist as an investigator you hear crazy stuff all the time and generally it's born out of a schizophrenic mind when I was an investigator working full-time we used to hear stories like this. You know, you'd go into a person's home, you're looking for someone, and, you know, they always go off in diatribes and, and tell you stories about the UFOs they've seen, you know, and the aliens that came into their room, 
And you know, you leave there and you go, what the hell is this? <laughs> exactly. And you laugh about it in the car. And yeah. after you leave the house, something slithers out of the back room and tells them, you did very well. You did not tell too much information about us. Yeah. You know, it, it is crazy. And you're right. It, it's having the privilege to interview people from every sector of life and oh, yeah. go into their homes is such an education oh, you know, yeah. on so many different levels from, like I said, the craziness that may or may not be true to the uh, stories that they have to tell, you know? Yeah, everybody has a story to tell. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you told these stories and I'm glad that you have a third installment coming out. Again, it's michaelalbrightbooks.com. It's a terrific read, it's called It Begins. And if you have a curiosity about UFOs and aliens and unexplained phenomenon, then this is the book for you. Michael, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. I just want to point out that the science in the book is well researched and true. Yeah. You know. So and, and that resonates throughout. You feel it that this is credible stuff, which is what, like I said, you created a very real world. And yeah. it's the fact that it's based on science and evidence that it's 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 pretty frightening. Um, hopefully 2020 was the worst we'll ever see in our lifetime. You know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, God knows what's coming. Michael, yeah, yeah. thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, sir. And you to the folks a- at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.